Thank you, Lisa. Everybody, you may be seated. Good morning and welcome. Welcome and happy Mother's Day to one and all. We welcome you to Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights. Whether you are here with us at the Sylvan Community Center or have joined us on Facebook live stream or on Zoom, we are widespread, we are bigger in number than you can tell and welcome everybody. So we're going to open our service by sharing today's daily word. Today is Sunday, May 8th, 2022. And the words for today are mother's blessing. It says, I bless all mothers everywhere. The word mother brings to mind love, gentleness, nurturance, and compassion. Even if I did not experience these qualities from the woman who gave me life, I give thanks for them in everyone who has inspired me and touched my life. To my mother and everyone who has blessed me with a mother's care, I send you love. I say a prayer of thanks for your presence in my life, for the sacrifices you made to give me the opportunity to grow and learn. You taught me the power of love and gentleness and the strength found in giving. You taught me above all to be true to myself. You are a leader who has taught me to lead by example. I send you thoughts of infinite love and peace as I join with others in gratitude and joy today. And our scripture this morning is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. And the words for today are mother's blessing. And now we're going to welcome Lisa to lead us in another song. Now it's time for our Everyday Wonder featurette. This is a photo that I took 
at the side of my house. It's got the trumpet vine and the privets, and these bloom every May. And they are so beautiful. But I always feel a little sad because I can't hold on to them. The flowers will fade, and I will need to wait another year. I always felt this way about sunsets, too. I'm from the Midwest where the sunsets are glorious. But you can't keep them. You can't even put them in your head enough to recall them in all their glory. Maybe this is just the way of the world. The world is fleeting and temporary and always changing. The English language seems to have a lack of adjectives to capture the nuances of our emotions, like I love the flowers, but they make me sad because they're going to go away. Other languages seem to do this better. And I have a couple of examples here. The first one is from the Japanese, it's, and I just make up the pronunciation, but I, I pretend that I know what I'm doing, and, and, you, and you buy it. <laughs> Not Tsukashi. And this is a nostalgic longing for the past, with happiness for the fond memory, yet sadness that it is no longer. And then from the German, we have Senschuk. And it means a desire for alternative states and realizations of life, even if they are unattainable. And the third one is from the French, dépassement, which is a melancholy word that refers to the feeling of not being in your home country. Mother's Day is a nostalgic holiday. We look back at our childhood with joy or dismay. We share memories with family members and dig out old photographs, pictures of times, places, and people that are forever gone from our lives. And so I'm going to share just a couple of slides of my family, beginning with the five sisters. My mother was the youngest of five girls. That's her on the left. And this photo was taken around 1943. I would say they are at Lake Springfield because we're all from Springfield, Illinois. Land of Lincoln, the five beauties. And the next one is of my mother and her mother. I think this is the most beautiful picture I've ever seen of my mother. It just captures something I've never, never seen in other photographs. And what you don't know is that that one square of wallpaper in the upper left-hand corner affected me like the Madeline did in Marcel Proust's story in his book, which is called The Search for Lost Time. It was erroneously translated, Remembrance of Things Past. You may recognize that title. He ate this cookie and it was exploded in his head his entire childhood three volumes. This book was over 4,000 pages long. The man remembered every detail. And I saw that little corner of wallpaper, the iconic wallpaper in Grandma's dining room, and I had a, a Proustian moment. And what you don't know is this little silver container right there is where they kept the change for the paper board. And so when he came to collect, grandma or grandpa would go get the little silver container and take it to the front door, pay him 65 cents, whatever it was. The last slide of family that I'm going to show is in grandma's kitchen. You know, your grandmother's kitchen unto itself. And we have 
Grandma and her sister Luella. That's me in the red. My mother is at the left with two of her sisters. And then in the front are two of my first cousins, Patsy and Nancy. So there are members of three generations of women. And trust me, there are a lot more women than that. And I come from a family of women. However, we fooled them because I had three younger brothers. I was the only girl. The part of this picture, which is iconic, is this avocado electric skillet. Oh, the fried chicken, the pork chops, the hamburgers, they just made my mouth water. So, okay, I'm done with remembrance of things past for this Mother's Day. A while back, I shared a couple of featurettes about life. I called it News from the Hood. And it was about life in my neighborhood, which is Gallant Circle. I live on Gallant Circle. And lately, I've been going on dog walks with this group, this motley group. These are uh, Google photographs. These are not the real people. And we see a woman who uses a walker. That's my next door neighbor, Kim, and her caregiver. And we see this old man who walks with a cane, and then a woman with her dog. So today I'm going to share an update of news from the hood and tell you about these people and our walks. Last Wednesday was one of those perfect spring days. We could hear the birds singing and smell the flowers of spring. The temperature was just right and the breeze was intoxicating. It was heavenly. Because it was Wednesday, it was also garbage day. <laughs> and lawn mowing guy, this, our, our lawn mowing guy looks a lot like this guy. He's got a great big beard. And so those two activities uh, were not like birds singing or spring flowers. They brought their own noise and their own smells. And yet they represented the way we are all connected needing the services that are provided and being part of a community. And the garbage man smiles and waves and the lawn man carries dog cookies in his pockets. We look here because the man with the cane, this old man who, who might even be older than me, is from the Ukraine. His name is Vasil. He knows only two phrases in English, and they are hallelujah and praise the Lord. And so for a while in our neighborhood, that's how we greeted each other, because he was usually out, and, and we'd say hallelujah, and he'd say praise the Lord. And, and I figured that any newcomers must really wonder what kind of neighborhood they have moved into. Vasil carries a small digital device that plays Ukrainian music. It's like a portable jukebox. And this music is sung by choirs of brawny Ukrainian men. Ooh, ooh, I mean, they're men choirs. And some of them are hymns that you might even recognize from a traditional church. And some are traditional songs of the Ukraine in that area that make you feel nostalgic for a place you've never been. And I'm sure that there is a foreign adjective in some language that would describe that feeling. Nostalgia for a place you've never been. And sometimes the caregiver, Jeannie and I, prance down the street with the music. And sometimes we can hear softly over the brawny men choir 
a sweet soprano voice singing along, and it's Kim. It's Kim. Kim has Alzheimer's, and it's been a couple of years since she could speak coherently. But she's always had a pretty voice. She used to be in the choir in this church. And it sounds like she is accompanying the men's choir, and it sounds like she is singing in Ukrainian. We don't know how that happens. We can't get an answer from her that we understand, but it just adds to the wonder of the day. Sometimes Vasil wears a knit cap in the blue and yellow colors of the Ukrainian flag. That's how we finally figured out he was Ukrainian and not Russian. We were confused for a long time. We walk by the home of Vladimir, and this is his real photograph. This, I took this in the tree out in the front of my house. He is the boy that helps me in the yard. Vlad's father is from Russia, and his mother is from the Ukraine. They both were born in those countries. We have several families from each of these countries on this circle and other families from other places. There was a boisterous Cinco de Mayo party just down the block this week. In the driveway at Vladimir's house was a car with a bumper sticker that said, Siberia, yes, it's cold, but it's fun. Vlad goes to Russian class every Thursday. And his family just got back from a vacation to the Grand Canyon. And to me, they look like they are having the perfect American dream of immigrant families. This particular day, as we were headed on the block toward home, coming toward us was Kim's husband, Ken, was Japanese, and he was wearing his black cert uniform and leading their big pit bull dog named Kiwi. Ken is a retired firefighter, and since he retired, he has volunteered for cert for the Civilian Emergency Response Team. That's what that sounds uh, stands for. When I was a child, it was called Civil Defense, and it evolved into CERT. And Ken has volunteered. He uh, leads the radio group for them. In his service, he provides another fiber in the network of love and support that sustain our town. Ken's mother and father were both in Japanese internment camps during World War II. He and Kim have adopted more than one pit bull over the years because they know that that breed of dog needs special protection. They've got a bad reputation they don't deserve. So there we are, immigrants, expatriates, old people, old dogs, enjoying the everyday wonder of life on earth. And then Jean shared that Kim will be moving to a residential care facility next week. Everything changes. Life is fleeting. Kim and Jeannie will no longer be taking dog walks. And I found myself in need of a foreign adjective to describe my feelings of loss. Just last week, Vasil shared a new word that he had learned. And when he tried it out, he looked unsure and his eyes were vulnerable and questioning as he said, bye, bye, bye. 
And so we close our featurette with the last two lines from Shakespeare's sonnet, number 73. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love well, which thou must leave ere long. And thus ends today's feature. Thank you for listening. Please sing with me, What a Wonderful World. time, we uh, have the opportunity to bless our prayer requests. We have our prayer box in the lobby where you can leave your prayer requests. And you may also um, email us for if you would like to request a prayer chaplain to call you or call Silent Unity at, um, what, well, it's, uh, I think it's 1-800-NOW-PRAY. And also there's an app. You pray, so we encourage you to do that. Let us just draw those prayers into our consciousness and into our hearts this morning. We reach out knowing uh, that we have such gratitude for the blessings of the people that we love and the places in our community and all of those in our global community and that our hearts go out to each one and to our situation. We bless these requests today and we release them into the loving care of the Christ Spirit this morning. Thank you, God. Amen. And at this time, please join me in preparing for a time of meditation. Thank you. 
Let us rest for a spell. We relax into the cool peace of this sacred moment and just let go. We lay our burdens down knowing that we need never bear them alone for we are always enveloped in God's great love. It is this love, the tender, nurturing, unconditional love that flows freely from the Creator that is reflected in every act of mothering in our world. We are part of a great chain of caring and caretaking. We tend to the needs of children as our needs were fulfilled when we were young. Each season in turn, receiving and giving, part of the great cycle of life. As we bless our ancestors, those who lit the way, we also bless the children of the world, those who will carry the torch forward. We are each positioned between the past and the future, watching our lives unfold as if they were a beautiful carpet being unrolled revealing patterns and connections, revealing the meaning in the design. While we are here in the great plane of the present, let us share in the mother love of the world. Let us, man or woman, freely give of the kindness of our spirits from the generosity of our hearts. As we reach out to others, regardless of their age or gender, we spread God's good love further into our families, our community, our nation, and our planet. Let us breathe again. And visualize love's sweet light pouring from our hearts. We relax. And let this light radiate brighter and brighter as we share some time in this silence. Mother, Father, God, we pray this day to know the balance, the balance between masculine and feminine, between head and heart. For when we act from this place of balance, then we can truly bless our world, now and forevermore.
has virtually oozed talent in this church. All right. Today's talk is called Illusions 2. When we start studying unity principles, we can feel like our old familiar map of the world has suddenly changed. Over the years, I've had more than one unity congregant tell me everything I thought I knew is wrong. It's like someone opened a door to a whole new world and I stepped through. In my explorations of this strange new world that we share, I have been reassured when I find the same information from different sources. This book, Illusions, The Adventure of Reluctant Messiah, which came out in 1976 by Richard Bach, is pure unity. It presents the same ideas as A Course in Miracles and numerous other diverse teachings. When we read the first paragraph of the book, there was a master come unto the earth, born in the Holy Land of Indiana, raised in the mystical hills east of Fort Wayne. That changes our map of the world. For when did Indiana become a holy land? I asked you, when was it not? This is a book, The Adventures of the Reluctant Messiah, about a Messiah who quit. He found the job to be boring. He said the crowds did not listen, they did not learn, and they wanted to either worship him or crucify him, so he quit, something you would not expect from a messiah. His name was Donald Shimoda, and Richard Bach met him, and they shared one glorious summer barnstorming the fields in the Midwest. They each owned a small old plane and they would sell rides to the, the residents in the areas. Donald Shimoda's plane was much larger than Richard Bach's, and yet they would find fields that should have been too small for Donald to land in, and he would land his plane as if it were a helicopter Many, many things he did were amazing and mysterious. And because of this, he had to keep on moving because he kept on attracting crowds of people who either needed healing or would like to crucify him. Donald Shimoda had this little book called the Messiah's Handbook and Reminders for the Advanced Soul. And you could open it when you had a question or a problem. It didn't have any page numbers. You would just open it to the right place. And some of the things in this book include the mark of your ignorance is the depth of your belief in injustice and tragedy. What the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. Shimoda taught Richard many things, that time is an illusion, that space is an illusion, why people keep on coming to the earth. And he ended it by saying, imagine the universe beautiful and just and perfect then be sure of one thing, that God has imagined it quite a bit better than you have. 
So here we go, 36 years later, and he writes the adventures of a reluctant student, Illusions 2. I just found this book like three weeks ago. I was ecstatic. Put it on my Kindle, gobbled it up, I read it one day. It's a small book, anyhow. In between those two books, Richard Bach wrote many other books. Some were spiritual, others seemed to focus on his love of flying and airplanes. He also wrote a series, I think it was a young adult series, about rescue otters. Otters. And I've got this figured out that they are sea otters. And they run a rescue boat, kind of like the Critter Coast Guard. And, and they rescue other critters in the ocean who are at risk from various things. I, I'm going to have to read it. It sounds delightful. I've read most of his books, but somehow I missed out on the otters. Illusions 2 begins when Richard crashes his seaplane. That's the seaplane, that's the seaplane. <laughs> Why do I want to say on drugs? <laughs> I know you hear that, that things get programmed. <laughs> um, he is in a coma for a long time and he's not expected to live. As time passes, we learn that he loved this plane. He named this plane Puff, Puff. And Puff was like a living being to him, and he grieved over the injuries and damage that it sustained in this crash. And while he's in his coma, he has encounters with Puff, and he has encounters with his childhood dog, and he has encounters with characters from some of his books, including The Rescue Otters, and he also has an extensive dialogue with Donald Shimoda, the Messiah who quit. Shimoda, who had given Richard a copy of the Messiah's handbook, had another book of wisdom. And it seems to apply to the times in which we live. Perhaps because Richard had just experienced a real disaster and so many of us are operating at the crisis level of anxiety, thinking that there are disasters in our world. This new book is called Lesser Maxims and Short Silences. Lesser Maxims and Short Silences. And some of the things from it are, God doesn't protect anyone. Everyone's already indestructible. Why you and why now? Because you asked it. You asked it to be this way. This disaster is the chance you prayed for. Your wish come true. There is no blessing that can't be a disaster and no disaster that can't be a blessing. Everything in space and time is a dream. Hospitals are thought forms. Hospitals are thought forms. They are dreams for people who believe in death by illness. We only take part of ourselves to earth when we're born. We only take part of ourselves to earth when we're born. Now, in two weeks, we're going to have a Sunday talk on the nature of mind. It's in, the, it's in the May calendar in your newsletter, the nature of mind, this is pure unity things. And we are going to explore this idea in great detail that we only take part of ourselves to earth when we're born. And then this one I really like. Oh, the different consciousness between the grieving and the dying. One sees midnight, the other joyful sunrise. 
One sees death, the other life as never before. I just learned that my Uncle Glenn had shared that when, when my aunt, my Aunt Virginia, was dying and he was with her, she opened her eyes and smiled at him. Also, in that moment, she looked like her father, although nobody in the family ever looked like him before. But I think he preceded her in death, and I don't know if that is connected or not. The affirmation which wove its way through this book and through the months it took Richard to recover is, I am a perfect expression of perfect love here and now. I am a perfect expression of perfect love here and now. The story has a happy ending, though we know that it is a continuing drama. Therefore, to call it an ending is incorrect. Richard makes a full recovery. One of his friends volunteers to rebuild Puff. Richard and his plane fly off into the sunset and live happily ever after, though we know that there is no ever after, so this too is, is incorrect. Richard learns these final bits of wisdom. I don't need to tell you that the term final is also incorrect, do I? The best we can do is live our highest right gracefully as we can and let the principle of coincidence take it from there. If this world is a fiction, then soon as we discover what's fact, we found our power over appearances. And so I ask you, how many of us count fictional characters, or those we've never met, among our closest friends? My hands up. And in closing, we share this from Donald Shimoda. The instant we believe we're separated from love, we're in the world of seems to be, seems to be, for an instant or a billion years. Every world, every afterworld, every possibility of hells and heavens, dance to the music of our beliefs. Far as I know, beliefs play only one language, and that's illusions. Let illusions go and beliefs vanish. Love is then with you, with you instantly, the way it's always been. And thus ends the lesson. God bless you.
beautiful song by uh, Jami Lula. Okay. Okay. So at this time, uh, we are going to bless our love offerings. So um, our ushers will pass the basket around. And um, you are reminded you, we are, you may make your offerings at P.O. Box 2176, Citrus Heights, California 95611. Um, you may also make your offerings online on our website. We have a donate button or in the newsletters that we send out. We thank all of you. We see you abundantly blessed as your prosperity flows through and in you in every moment. So together, let us say our um, unity's prosperity prayer. Divine love flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I choose to give, and all that I am open to receive. And so it is. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. So we have a few announcements this morning. Next Sunday, we're back on Zoom, and the topic is the Metaphysical Trinity. This month in May, I'm covering some unity basic metaphysical principles because I want y'all to be informed. You know, I want to keep up, guys, keep up. Uh, Lisa's taking this Sunday off, and our guest musician will be Sky Nelson Isaacs. We know Sky, he's been with us before, and we're Thrilled to be able to have some time with him again. Then on Wednesday, the 18th, Lisa's going to start a five-week class called Life Loves You. It will be on Zoom. It begins at 6.30. The five weeks, we're asking a love offering of $50, but you can come by the week. And generally, it's a $15 per week if you don't take advantage of the discount and pay in advance. So that's the 18th that class starts. Then you may remember when we were here before, we talked about going to the community observatory. Well, I've set a date. It's in our May calendar for May the 27th, which is a Friday field trip to the community observatory. Stay tuned for details. Now, you know, that during Lent, we were collecting money for the Heart Organization, which is the Homeless Assistance Program in Citrus Heights. So we uh, collected a total of $160, and we um, have a thank you card here. If you have not already signed it, please do so, and we'll slip in the check and mail it to them with with you know, best wishes from all of us who are, are supporting that. I was going to interrupt. You're going to interrupt, okay. So, uh, I may be happy to make you your day card for Taliban and Lisa. And uh, some of you will be signing the thing. I haven't been saying who so much. Never mind. Here's your oh, card. Thank you. So beautiful. Thank you, Brian. Happy Matriarch's Day. Takes one to know one. <laughs> We're also thanking Ashley for the pink roses. And oh, Mariana's in the other room, but she's the one that gave us the trick. Go to Costco. They'll last forever. They don't cost as much. You get a lot of money, a lot for your money. And so we're inviting everybody, whether you are a man or a woman, to take some roses home with you. I brought um, these big Ziploc plastic bags and a roll of paper towels so that you can transport your roses in whatever fashion you think will make them stay the prettiest wherever you're going after the service. And then, as always, after this service, we'll have a little time of coffee, and we invite you to stay and chat. 
So then we're going to ask Lisa to lead us in the peace song. If you'll stand for this, please. for our prayer of protection, we know that the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God flashes over us, and precious of God watches over us. <laughs> Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.